Hi everybody, I'm Samantha Calamaris with App Properties. I'm doing another interview today that I think you all will enjoy. Sacrifice, knowledge, service, and care. Four words that come to my mind when I think of all the frontline healthcare workers. They are the backbone of an effective healthcare system. Frontline healthcare workers are those directly providing services where they are most needed. Today, I'm speaking with two women in our community that are both in the medical field, Megan McDowell and Courtney Schmidt. As COVID-19 continues to spread, there is nothing that differentiates any of these healthcare providers from the people that become sick. Today, we will talk about how to best support, manage, and protect these individuals, which will not just play, just which is, does not just include physicians, but also nurses, emergency responders, interpreters, and all the staff interacting with patients. Thank you guys for being with me today. Thanks for having us. No, of course. <laughs> okay, so thank you for your time. I'd love for us to start off with you telling us a little bit about yourself, your family, and your connection to our community, and where you currently work in the medical industry. Megan, let's start with you. Hi, so my name is Megan McDowell. Um, I've lived here in the community for almost 10 years. Sam was our realtor when we moved in. Um, I've got a husband and three kids, an eighth grader at middle school north a fourth grader um, at Spencer Loomis and an incoming kindergartner who's very excited to join the ranks. Um, I currently work in a few different roles. I have um, been teaching for about the last seven, almost eight years. Um, so I teach clinical for nursing at both Northern Illinois University and Harper College. So I'm teaching right now three courses, all of which have been transitioned online because of the pandemic. Um, and I also currently work at North Shore um, in critical care. So that's, that's my and background. Courtney? Courtney, how about you? Hi, I'm Courtney Schmidt. Um, Sam was also my realtor and now my uh, neighbor. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I am a nurse practitioner, family nurse practitioner. I work for a private practice. Um, we've got about nine clinics um, all throughout um, the area um, up into Rockford. Um, I also... Um, function as a nurse practitioner in the hospital. Um, I serve um, the more underprivileged um, population at Vista Medical Center in Waukegan. Um, and uh, we see patients there. And so we, I kind of do both in the office and in the hospital. Um, I've got two kids and a husband. And um, I have, my daughter is second grader at Spencer Loomis and my son is a fourth grader at Spencer Loomis. And they are going stir crazy, I'm sure, like everyone else. <laughs> yes, we, we, it's Saturday. It's beautiful outside. So we will all get outside yeah. shortly. Um, but until then, um, you know, Megan, you, there, I want two aspects to this question. One, it was, I was going to start it off. What, what is it like going to work? So we understand that you primarily are a teacher. And a lot of those students are, are being thrown into the industry quickly, which somewhat has to worry you a little bit, but I think you've prepared them enough to be able to handle that. Uh, but you do go to the hospital and when you get in the car and you're heading there, how are you feeling? Do you feel like you're heading into battle? Do you feel like this is your purpose? How do you feel when you're on your way to work? Um, well, since our hospital is now the dedicated COVID hospital for North Shore, um, my background's critical care, and I'm continuing to work in our critical care unit, taking care of all very sick patients. So we're where, you know, if a patient's needing a ventilator or advanced support in terms of more oxygen, they're coming to our unit. So we're seeing the sickest COVID patients. Um, having worked in critical care for almost 17 years, I've been seen and exposed to almost everything. And absolutely, it's my passion. I love ICU. Um, I have a team that works with me that is phenomenal. They are the best. Um, so there's definitely a level of trepidation that I didn't have before. Um, I, you know, in talking with my coworkers, we all just said that this is the first time in our careers where we've ever had a fear of not only exposing ourselves, but to potentially exposing our children and our loved ones to this, this virus. So for me, um, it's, I'll be honest, it's been scary, um, but I also feel once you get there and you look into the eyes of someone who is very, very sick and you are their only person that they're seeing, that fear goes away and what takes over is that 
we are doing our job because we love it and we're good at taking care of people. So that fear kind of takes a back seat and you remember why you became a nurse and that's because we care for people um, in whatever capacity that is. So even if it means potentially putting myself in harm's way, that takes absolute, you know, a backseat to these people needing our help right now. So luckily, you know, we right now have the uh, proper equipment to care for these patients. So I don't feel scared anymore. I think initially before we really knew, um, but now that I, I have the proper equipment to safely care for these people, I feel much better. So, but definitely yeah. Yeah, let's wrestle. Good, good. All right, Courtney, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I I 100% agree with Megan. I think, um, you know, the potential to expose our, our family and our loved ones is um, is definitely there in our minds. Once you get to either the office or the hospital, um, you kind of, you your focus changes on helping these people. Um, and as, you know, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians, um, and, and other staff, um, we you know, we do that very well together. Um, and I mean, I've, I've really seen a sense of um, camaraderie and community when we get there. Um, you know, people are very supportive to each other. Um, on a private practice end, you know, it's a, it's a little bit different. Um, I'm fortunate enough to see kind of both ends of, of the spectrum in the office and in the hospital. So I see patients that are very scared about what's going on um, and their potential for exposure, answering a lot of questions. I spent a lot of time throughout the day reassuring patients um, that, you know, we're here for them, that we can provide them with that security and testing, um, as well as in the hospital. I mean, certainly going in, you do feel a sense of, um, like, of, of, Right, you know, when you go in, because it's scary, it's nothing like we've ever seen before in our careers, and, um, you know, handling these patients, it, it can be very difficult, and watching someone in that state, um, you know, where, where they feel that they can't breathe, it is a scary state to watch someone go through, so providing that care for them, um, and that support, uh, you know, it's, it's what we do, so I'm, I'm proud right. to call myself, you know, a, a nurse practitioner, and, um, and especially during these times. Yeah, I think it's great because you both are, are soothing, terrified patients. You're um, consoling heartbroken families because most of the time you're the only one there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about PPE, which is personal protective equipment. Um, it sounds like, Megan, you had mentioned that you feel like you guys have the proper equipment, which is great. Um, I would like to ask you, Megan, briefly, what, um, what do you have to do when you go to work? How do you prepare and protect yourself from um, making sure that you're not exposed? Um, sure. So they are supplying for us scrubs at the hospital that I do not bring home. Um, we wear a piece of equipment called a PAPR, which is a powered... I always have to think about it. Powered air purifier <laughs> respirator. So basically, it's a full face shield. I have a HEPA filter and a battery pack that I wear around my waist so that it's able to clean and purify any of the air. Um, We're going to show a little picture right. here. <laughs> Rocking it over there. Um, yes. so it's, um, a great piece of equipment to have. Um, we also have N95s that we wear to, as well. Um, but the pappers are really kind of great because the patient can see our face. Um, so that it has to be helpful. Yeah. 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 We have to speak up a little bit louder. Um, so, but typically we are showering at work, leaving the scrubs at work. And then, you know, so that we're not potentially exposing ourselves or our family. Right. Courtney, I know you've um, had a little different experience. Um, being my neighbor, I get to hear from you all the time, of course, from my driveway to yours. Um, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing and the extra steps that some other companies and businesses have had to do to help protect you guys. Yeah, I mean, certainly working for a private practice, um, you know, we've come across our challenges when it comes to obtaining PPE because the priority is sending those um, that, that type of equipment to the hospital. So currently, you know, we, um, we've, done, we've done a great job. The company that I work for has done a fantastic job trying to reach out to the community. And we've had a lot of patients that have donated masks. Um, we've had a lot of community members that have donated masks. My wonderful neighbors have donated masks to me, um, which is greatly appreciated. We've had to be a little bit more creative um, with our PPE. 
in the office. Um, I am wearing a painter's suit, which provides just as much um, protection for me. Um, and we wipe that down and um, I have a shield in that 95 and then I wear a surgical mask over that. Um, so I feel, I feel pretty protected, um, you know, on a private practice um, base. When I get to the hospital, um, we do have to go to the sixth floor and, and you're only allowed, you know, a certain amount um, every couple of days. And um, we're doing our best, certainly. Great America has been wonderful and they donated a bunch of ponchos because our hospital had run a little bit on the lower side with gowns. And those are... Um, <laughs> I can't, are you know what I was looking for, but I... I'm not great at the whole sharing thing yet. Oh, here's, yeah. <laughs> here's one good one. And oh, here you are. Here you are in your Great yeah. America poncho. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think um, the, the silver lining to um, the crisis is really seeing a lot of people step up um, in, on a community base, you know, certainly having donations. Um, one of my fellow Brownie moms, um, she works for Cliff Bar and they donated almost a thousand Cliff Bars that I delivered to the hospital um, two weeks ago. And, and things like that are really great for um, the ICU staff and the emergency room staff that kind of have to eat on the go. You really, when you get your mask on, you really don't want to take it off um, mm -hmm. when you're at work. So eating and drinking uh, becomes a little bit challenging because you really want to avoid trying to touch your face as much as possible. Um, so, so things like that on the go are really great. Um, but you know, right now we're doing a, re a really good job, um, trying to keep ourselves safe, you know, similar to Megan, um, I changed prior to coming in the house. Um, I leave my shoes in the garage. Um, we do our best, you know, I, I go right into the shower. Um, I don't shower at work, um, because you know, at my office, I don't have, um, those kind of facilities, but, um, I, when I come in the house, it's in fresh clothes and I go right into the shower. So. Um, Good. Well, I mean, yeah, and different different hospitals have different um, uh, availability of, of access to the staff, which is one thing I wanted to ask, you know, because it's important to me that making sure that you guys are protected, but there's so many people that work at the hospitals, janitors and interpreters, like I said, um, the admins that work there, are they all able to feel protected as well from your, Megan, how about you at the hospital where COVID is mainly uh, the main focus? I can't really speak to outside of my department. Um, what I can say is I know we've cut back on a lot of that staff to prioritize the PPE to the main team that are caring for the COVID patients. So meaning respiratory therapists, nurse practitioners, PAs, nurses, um, where we've seen, at least on our unit, a reduction in bringing in ancillary staff. Um, now that this is kind of going on for a while, we're starting to see more of that staff re-enter our unit. Um, but I think in general, you know, when I see other personnel, like respiratory therapists, lobotomy and that, they are still given the level of protection that we are. Okay. So, but again, we're in an area where there's, you know, COVID patients on ventilators or potentially on, right. you know, a high level of oxygen where it could be in the air. So they're really honing in. Limiting. Yes, limiting. Um, okay, so one thing that it means a lot to me, and I'm always talking to you, Megan, about it, is everybody wants to help, right? They want to bring food, they want to do something, they want to help the staff, they want to feed um, everybody there. And I'm asking you specifically, what, is, what would you say to somebody like me or somebody in your community? How can we help? Like, what is the best way? Is it bringing in some snacks? Is it uh, making sure to um, provide food? Um, is it saying, you know what, we need to help their families and bring some groceries? Like, what, what would you say we could do to really help? I think the biggest thing is just supporting anyone that you know right now that's a healthcare worker, whether that's reaching out to them, um, saying thank you, texting them, checking to see how they're doing mentally, you know, coping wise. Um, for us in the hospital, it has been a godsend to have people donating meals. So at our hospital, we do have kind of like a meal train so that every shift um, people could sign up to provide meals. Like Courtney was saying, we don't have a lot of time to eat. Um, so we don't, it's not like we can, you know, spend a half an hour down in the cafeteria. We're typically quickly taking off our PPE, chugging a bottle of water as quickly as we can, eat something so we can get right back in there. Um, and we work 12 hour shifts in the ICU. So a lot of times that turns into 13, 14 hours when we talk about, you know, getting the appropriate PPE on, off and everything else that goes with that. 
So I think the meals have been awesome. Um, I have a site that I can pass along. We do through um, giving in kind. Um, we do have a charitable foundation through North Shore that is really helping offset some costs of this, helping us to train and hire more employees. So if it's a monetary donation, um, we are still accepting brand new PPE. So if anyone does have a connection where they have um, PPE that's brand new, there's, they can go on North Shore's website and sign up for that as well. But I think the biggest thing is just supporting. I think you know, just right. having family and friends reaching out saying, you know, we're thinking about you, praying for you. That to me has been the biggest source of just, you know, just helping me cope through all this. Courtney, how about you? How, are, are you I'm sure you might be seeing it a little bit differently? So do you want to tell yeah. me how it's going? You know, I think again, kind of to, to touch on what Megan said, you know, having the support from the community is, um, it, it definitely brightens your day because, you know, it can be, if you focus on all the negative things that are going on in the world right now and in our own community and we're in our work community and our personal community, it's difficult to handle that, that kind of stuff. So having people reach out, I mean, certainly for me having my family, you know, write chalk messages for me when I come home from work or, you know, my nieces, they will put notes on my, my bed um, mm -hmm. and uh, on the door before I leave for work. Things like that mean a lot. Um, on a, you know, having, like I said before, having something fast and easy, like Cliff Bar, you know, was so generous to donate. Mm -hmm. Something like and that. she that's is really... from our community, so we want to. She is, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, but are they yeah, are they so, being fed in your hospital like they are in a lot of other hospitals? They are. You know, when I had spoken with the ICU um, team, uh, they they really were appreciative for those little type of things like um, that they can eat on the go. They do they do get um, meals delivered and things like Good. that from um, from various people in the community to, trying to donate and trying to help. You know, um, so. They try their best. You know, I, I work in a little bit of a different community um, and being in Waukegan and uh, everyone is just so thankful for any type of donation or support, you know, going into the hospital, even just having a sign, you know, that people will put outside of the hospital or even in their windows on my way to work, driving to, to work and seeing that kind of stuff. It really does brighten your day and it makes you feel a little bit more supported um, and appreciated for what for what we're doing and the sacrifice that healthcare um, and first responders, um, you know, are putting forth. So so that's definitely appreciated. But yeah, little things, um, you know, maybe cases of water or things like that. Local, um, donating to your local, um, you know, hospitals and contacting them. Uh, that's definitely appreciated. Um, you know, any kind of caffeine is always appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so you know, so things like that. Yeah, good. Well, you guys have kind of answered my next question, which is you're feeling frustrated and sometimes like you're failing, but there's so many memorable moments, including standing ovations when you're leaving, um, chalk notes, which I see, um, signs in windows. And so I assume you both will agree that these dis displays of appreciation are, are helpful. Yeah, I mean, it, it's wonderful to, to see those things. And um, even you know, walking to my car um, and having someone say like, hey, thank you for what you're doing, like just a stranger, um, that, that's happened before. And, and that's, it's, it really makes you feel just wonderful about what's going on in this crisis that we're in. And um, like I said, it's super easy to get caught up on the negative stuff um, mm -hmm. and kind of dwell on like the sacrifice that you're making going in and being nervous. And um, I think in the medical world, we, you know, like Megan was saying before, we really, we thrive on these things and helping people and seeing people get better because people are getting better. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, again, it's easy, it's easy to, to focus on the people that are sick and, um, and unfortunately dying, but there are a lot of people that are getting better that, that um, we play a role in and, and that's, that's amazing. Good. Well, you hit my last question too. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd love to hear some positive stories. Megan, um, I know we, we talk often and you've had some good stories. In the beginning, you had some tough, tough stories, um, including, you know, one where you're sharing, you know, your own phone with a family that's saying goodbye to somebody. I can't even begin to imagine that. So is there more positive stories that you're seeing on your end? Yeah, I think just again going with what Courtney's saying that we um, we're discharging patients, which is wonderful. We've discharged over 300 patients at North Shore so far that have been COVID positive. 
So that's wonderful outcomes. Um, a patient that I had early on in this pandemic that was uh, a younger patient with no comorbidities, meaning he didn't have any health things that we're hearing about, you know, no high blood pressure, he was healthy, um, and ended up getting COVID-19 and needing to be on a ventilator. And when I cared for him, he was very much awake um, in writing things to me. And we were kind of, you know, as best we can, talking back and forth. And I asked him that when he gets better and when he gets off the ventilator, he had a promise that he'd come back and see us. So um, I got word last time that I worked that he was extubated. He was taken off the ventilator. He spent some more time in our hospital, but was able to go home to his wife and his three kids. So to me that, like I'm, I'm such a goofus, I get the chills just thinking about that, but it really, that is why we do what, we're do, what we do, because, you know, so there are people that are getting better. Um, but I think that said, you know, we're, we're not seeing the surge that we thought coming, you know, with not needing to use McCormick Place in that, which is great. But I think the reason why is because people have been doing such a great job of staying home and really protecting themselves and their families. So I just, I really encourage everyone to continue, even though that it's hard and we miss our family. I mean, I haven't seen my parents in six weeks, which is awful, um, but it's important to people that are in the healthcare community that we don't have that surge because everyone thinks, oh, it's over and now we can go back out and start resuming too early. So I just, I really ask that people be sensible um, and that, that we continue adhering at least until we get a better grasp on this so that we don't get overwhelmed. I could yeah. not appreciate hearing that right now because I think that's a great way to end um, this interview. You two are my friends. You are people I care about. I love your children. I love your families. Uh, I can't thank you enough for what you guys are doing. You're spending um, time away from your families. You are doing good work and you're spreading a great message. Um, so I want to say thank you to you and continue to reach out to me and let me know what we can do to help. Um, but most importantly, I want you both to go and enjoy your day with your family and spend a ton of time outside distancing from everybody. <laughs> thanks so much, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Thanks for, you know, of course, yeah, of course. A shout right. out. I'm trying. All right, good. Ladies, thank <laughs> you for your time. Wash your hands. Okay. Yes, wash your hands. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone.